Okay, in the first video on my series of upgrading the Musical Fidelity TriVista 21 tube deck, I mentioned that I had the chance to compare it against a Chord Hugo 2. Both are excellent decks. Um, it has to be said though that my TriVista, although a high-end unit in its day, is now pretty old. Uh, it was first made in 2004. Uh, the Hugo 2 is a current device here in 2022 and that was released in 2018, I think. So, so, we're, so we're talking about a 14 year gap between the two. How many DAC generations is that? Probably quite a few. In that time there's been a lot of development in audio digital to analog converters. Sampling rates have risen dramatically. The musical fidelity here can handle a maximum of 24 bits at 108 kHz whereas the Hugo 2 can reach up to 768 kHz at 32 bits, I think, uh, and it can handle DSD-512. Of course, how many of your preferred albums are actually available at those rates, let alone even half that? Not many. In a direct comparison between uh, a 16-bit 44.1K CD and a 24-bit version of the same music, I can hear the difference, and the music is that extra bit smoother. Again, there aren't many releases, in my mind, to justify the relentless push for higher and higher sample rates on consumer DACs. The source material just isn't available. It doesn't keep up. If you think of the investment required in equipment for studios to, to keep up with, with that advance, it's, it's just not going to happen. The vast majority of consumers aren't in the least bit interested. It's just us geeky audiophiles. <laughs> For the time being, I'm happy with 24-bit 96 kHz. Um, but most of my digital source material is 16-bit 44.1. Back to the features of these two DACs. The DAC chip used in the TriVista 21 is the Burr Brown DSD 1792. This, as its model number suggests, can support DSD. But here it's been implemented for PCM only. The Hugo 2 implements Core's own DAC magic on an FPGA chip or a field programmable gate array. The upside to that is that it can be upgraded with new firmware as time goes on. So plenty much in the way of formats on the Hugo, uh, not so much on the Dry Vista. If you want modern features, then an older unit like this, this is not for you. I'll leave it for you to scour the, the data sheets to uncover the supported formats, features, and so on of the Hugo. I'll just add that I think there are many DACs uh, on the market these days that support a plethora of formats uh, and sample rates that will struggle to get close to the sound quality of an older unit like this. Not just this, there are other ones out there. Here the money, particularly in the Musical Fidelity case, has been spent on the boring but ultimately important power supply. Back to sound quality. I compared the Hugo 2 against the TriVista 21 on and off over a period of a couple of weeks. I have to say there is a difference between them, but it isn't huge. For a gap of 14 years, you might find that surprising. Okay, my TriVista here has had some internal upgrades, but this, this was far from complete. Only really the power supply board capacitors, op amps, and the basic electrolytic capacitor upgrades the previous owner had made to the main board. Over a stock TriVista, that will actually be a reasonable change. Nevertheless, we are comparing something which I paid £550 for against a unit costing around £2,000. I found the TriVista to have a fuller sound. The music had more flesh on its bones, if you like, in comparison to the Hugo 2. But the TriVista did have a little graininess, but the Hugo didn't. That said, the Hugo was a tad too dry sounding for me. Not totally clinical, but less emotionally connecting. The chord can, however, dig out more in the way of details. I enjoyed both, but in different ways. I pointed out a couple of areas where, where each deck has the edge over the other. For me, as it stands, with the beginnings of the upgrade, I prefer the greater body uh, that TriVista delivers. But I know there will be any number of people that will crave the ability that the cord has to, to, re to reveal those micro details. 
I love detail too, but I don't want that at the expense of losing that feeling of involvement that a DAC like the TriVista delivers. So overall, I prefer the TriVista 21. That's a personal taste thing and your mileage may vary. Um, with the cost difference of a used unit like this and a new Hugo, I know where my money would and in actually did go. <laughs> Even with the upgrade costs, it's value for money or sound per pound, sound per dollar, sound per euro, it's, it's just undisputable. The value, it, it just wins the value argument. <laughs> When I'm finished upgrading this, I expect it to have the edge over the Hugo. Hopefully I'll be able to borrow the Hugo again at that point um, for another comparison. Can it be better? Yes, of course. Um, here we have the Hugo 2, for which some will be the preferred choice. Especially if you're after a portable or transportable, uh, as Cord call it, DAC. If that's the case, I'm not sure there's anything that can beat it. I made this comparison because the Hugo 2 was available to me. But obviously, its reputation goes beyond what you would expect from a portable box. There are also some other really impressive looking DACs out there. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to try them. That said, if anyone wants to throw any of those my way to do a review, you're more than welcome. Let's see, there's the Mola Mola Tambaki, the Denifrips Terminator, the Cordave, PS Audio Direct Stream, Shit Yggdrasil, and, and probably a whole bunch of others I've missed off that list. Back in the real world though, I don't think I've reached enough subscribers or honed my YouTube technique enough for that to happen. <laughs> um, I, can, I can dream. So your task is to get liking and subscribing so I can get my grubby little mitts on those DAX to try them out and I'll report back honestly. You know, there are, of course, other good used high-end DACs from other makers out there which will still perform well. And they too will almost certainly have upgrade potential to rival the current generation sonically, like I'm doing here with the Musical Fidelity. Please comment below on, on any DACs that you think would fit that bill or that you'd like to see given the modified treatment in future videos. Newsflash! Since doing that comparison, I've replaced some more components inside, mostly local power supply bypass capacitors, which were swapped out for Nishikon's premium range of electrolytics. That has reduced the graininess I mentioned in the TriVista still further, and everything is now presented against a blacker background still. And that allows more of the details to be heard. There's still more to do though, plenty to go yet. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video useful. If you're inclined to, please uh, click on the thumbs up. And if this is the sort of thing that floats your boat, feel free to subscribe and click the notification bell to be kept up to date as I post new content. All going well, the second video in the TriVista 21 upgrade series should be along in about a week. Um, for now, take care. You'll see me next time.